Welcome, welcome, family, to another episode of Just Talking to You. I'm your boy, Big Smooth, and I'm not here by myself. I'm here with the crew. Say what's up to them, crew. Hey, everybody. Hello. Hello. What's going on, and, people? And tonight, we got a special guest sitting in with us, a uh, brother from St. Louis. He's a comedian, comedian Jason Jenkins. He's uh, he's going to sit in with us and uh, bless us tonight with his knowledge and everything. Brother Jason, how you doing today, brother? I'm all right. I don't know about blessing y'all with no knowledge. I, I might talk a little something. It might, might, might not be true. <laughs> hey, hey, we just glad to have you today. We just glad to have you. So, Nay Nay, introduce yourself to the people, to our viewers. Hello, every oh, sorry, I'm about to cut you. Hello, everybody. I'm Nay Nay. You don't got you better add something else on to that damn. I don't Nene. know what you be want me to add. You can just say, want... hey, hey, I'm Nay Nay. I'm, I'm you, can say, you can say, I'm Nay Nay. <laughs> I'm Nene and I'm looking for your uncle. Tell your uncle I'm looking for him. Something like, something like that. I, I'm Nene I'm and I'm looking for all the men that wear the gray jogging pants. What's up? <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's up. Dre Day, introduce yourself. Hello, everybody. It's Dre Day, Black Princess of the South. Thank you for being here with us tonight. What happened to the Texas tornado? <laughs> I'm always going to say something different. I'm the Texas Tornado, Black right. Princess of the South, the Brown Bombshell. I'm all of that. Okay. All right. All right. I got you. That's what's up. <laughs> Toya, Miss Toya, what's up? Introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. I'm Toya, Queen of the Loo. Dang, she said Queen of the Loo. That's what's up. Last but not least, my man, Chris Storian. Introduce yourself. Hey, everybody. It's your man, Chris Storian. This is your mama's favorite. It's the reason why she don't go to bed so late. In the gray jogging pants. In the gray jogging pants. So, no, nah, no. I swear, man, somebody go catch no. your ass and bust your damn head. You say that you they mama favorite. And watch, they mama gonna have a nick. I'm sorry, I'm gonna say it. Mama gonna start realizing why they mama had breakfast ready so early. Hey, they mama gonna have a dude call the house named Chris. He gonna say, hey, let's speak to your mama. This Chris. Like, oh, that's that joke off YouTube. We're gonna bust that cat head. <laughs> oh man, they go catch you though. They go catch you. How was everybody day today? Man, I'm good. Awesome. Pretty decent. Oh man, okay. easy breezy. Well, how was the weather like in y'all cities and everything? I know how it was where we were. It was on some bullshit. It was rainy. It was rainy here in St. Louis. Was it? Yeah. My right, son, son was nowhere to be found. That nigga was on strike today. <laughs> oh. What you say the sun? That nigga was on strike today, huh? He did a no call, no show today. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. What was the sun like? What well, hey, what was it like up here? See? No, this uh this Midwest weather is trash. Raining. Uh got frozen branches. Look like they falling down. It's really crazy <laughs> today. Man, man, My heart bleeds lying. for you guys. Oh, I forgot the, 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 really. tex, the Texas tornado. What was the weather like down there in uh, Texas? It was a balmy. That was fire. Seventy-nine degrees. It was over. The that wind was, was blowing. A nice warm breeze. Was the sun shining uh, bright? No, it was overcast today. Uh, <laughs> it was overcast, but we like it like that. We like hope, overcast. Hope y'all put some powder on down overcast. there in Texas. Come on, some powder. <laughs> <laughs> Hope y'all put some powder on down there. All in, in the crevices and all the crevices. Not too much leaking out your pants when you sit down. And shit. Okay. Man, my Tell nephew, you. my nephew do Looking that like all the time. Like this before the game when you sit down. Right, right, right. <laughs> do like the old ladies do. Old lady get a little powder, get a butt, <laughs> raise them old, saw them bad titties up and put them up underneath us. Oh, oh, that oh, puff oh. thing that was a circle, that little circle puff that your grandma oh. had in the little... That was for here. Right, You're supposed you. to put your hat ah, on. Ah, you got them, <laughs> hey, them old ladies, I'm telling you, them old ladies lift up them old they titties. They still do boy, that today. I be cracking up when I see them around like that. 
<laughs> oh man, then you you can smell, Coming especially from the top of their shirt. They got that powder on them when they had a shirt down. Oh yeah, sticking yeah. up like that. Uh huh. Especially when you're at church and stuff. When you mm-hmm. give them a hug, they smelling straight like Johnsons, man. Miss Gertrude, Miss Gertrude, asking me why my mouth dry like you ain't got all that uh Johnson <laughs> Johnson right. around here, all on your areolas. Right. <laughs> hey, but would you hey, rather hey, them hey, smell hey, like Johnson and Johnson or Sweaty City? Ben Gay. Sweat. Yeah, right. Yeah. It. And you know, it's always Miss Emma. Miss Emma come up to you and say, "Come here, baby. I ain't seen you since she was a little boy." Oh, um, yeah. Emma, stop hugging me! Stop hugging me with them old titties. I don't want you hugging me like that. Don't be doing that. I'm grown now, Miss Charlene. I'm telling you, <laughs> knock old ladies. You go get hey, about them you titties. Get knocked you can down, hear from the back Charlene. and still suck on the titties. They just, she had it to you like this. Hey, Miss Charlene, get knocked down, boy. Be like, hey, knocking Miss Charlene down. Oh, Miss Charlene, come in here singing and stuff and. Why well, oh must Shirley God. listen to trap music pulling up to the church? <laughs> Miss Shirley ain't be like, oh, young man, young man, you told his tail, you told his ass up, young man. Oh, young man. Yeah, Miss Shirley, you gotta leave her alone, boy. And then she's gonna, she gonna throw them oxtails on for you soon as she comes. <laughs> throw some good old oxtails with some cornbread on and everything. <laughs> Miss Charlene know the quickest way is to stomach not so wired. Hey man, hey Miss Charlene, she got her money. She got a, she got a ex, she got a husband's uh pension. He done passed away and stuff. He went to be with the law. She got his little pension check coming in, uh, Social Security. Yeah, she bring over this grade. She chilling. She don't want her daughter bringing them kids over to that house. No, you can't bring them over. I got, I got, I got company tonight. I got, I got company. <laughs> I'm finna go see a man about a dog. And Mr. Mr. James coming over tonight. Deacon James. Deacon, Deacon, Deacon James coming over tonight. What we finna have? Pray? You finna lay hands on me. I'm gonna minister some healing and stuff. Mm-mm-mm. Oh my God, man. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. Hey, man, we're gonna jump off into our topic today, guys. Uh, we're gonna do it again like we did it last week. Everybody talk about this mystery topic and everything. And uh, this is gonna be a little interesting topic tonight. So, man, who who gave me the drum roll last time? Dre, that you gave it to me, or Chris gave it to me? Excuse me. All right, then, tonight's topic, and this is a hell of a good topic, guys. And everyone can relate to this if you're in a relationship or been in a relationship. But the topic for the night is, is it okay to discipline children in marriages and blended marriages and relationships? In feedback. That's me. That's me. Hold up. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm trying to switch Oh, he good. Hey, that's, that's the topic. I'm going to read it off to you again. Is it okay to discipline children in blended marriages and relationships? Hmm. Oh. Ooh. Mm. Hey, that's good, man. Hey, mm. I, hey, brother, I'm gonna start off with my guest tonight, brother, brother, hey. brother Jason. Tell so, me what you think, man. So uh I'm gonna say this. It depends on the uh the maturity of the parents because I'm in a blended family and I ain't been nothing. I've been with my wife since the youngest kid, you know, her youngest ones was six months. So I've been a part of their life, but their dad got a problem with if I say anything to them. And he's like, from jump, he was like, you know, you don't got to listen to him. And if I'm abusive, I can understand not wanting, you know what I'm saying? Not, not, you want, not want me to discipline them. But I think if it, if there's an understanding and there's no verbal abuse, physical abuse, I don't think it should be a problem if you are disciplining that child, especially if they living under your, they living under my roof. You want to tell me I can't even, yeah, I can't, I can't thump him one time if he, if he don't take out the trash when he's supposed to. I I just think that's crazy. Man, hey, you right, brother. You right. Dre Day, talk to me. What you think? Is it okay to discipline uh, a child in a blended marriage, a blended relationship? Uh, I'm, I'm basically with Jason on this. It really, has, you know, it has to do with the maturity of the people inside the relationship and the parents, the other parent as well, how, what they feel like, you know, the boundaries are. And I think that's something that 
all the parties involved need to sit down and talk about. I know for me, you know, when I was like when me and my son's father uh, broke up, I didn't bring anybody home because my son was like six months old when me and his dad broke up. Um, and I didn't bring anybody home to meet my child until he was like 11. And he, you know, he ended up, we ended up moving in together and everything. And my thing was, you're here in this house, you know, Reese, I'm sorry, my child has to listen to you. You know, I know you're not going to be abusive, but conversely, if it was his children coming to the house or something like that, then I would have to know how, and he had like four baby mamas, but whatever, however their mothers felt about four how I mamas. dealt with, huh? Four baby mamas? Yes, I dated a man who had six children, four baby mamas. Boy, yes. you know how to pick them, don't you? I do, I do, I have, I got it. I feel attacked. Huh? I feel attacked. <laughs> Don't, I feel attacked. Got, Don't feel attacked. Don't feel attacked. I definitely got four listen, baby mama. Listen, listen, listen. Oh, Lord. <laughs> listen. Don't Thank feel attacked. Like, I am <laughs> such wait, good wait. friends. I'm such good friends with this guy today. Today. Me and him are, we thick as thieves right today. We just wasn't right for each other. It is what it is. But I would have to, I would have to acknowledge, even though I had said, okay, you know, you in this house, you helping me feed my child, you helping me clothe my child, you, you know, can, you have to discipline him as another adult. If he does something, you know, wrong inside your purview, I need you to handle that because he has to learn to respect you too. And that was something, you know, me and his dad actually had to talk about that. Cause you're not here, you're not mm -hmm. you're not even in Texas right now. So, how did his dad react to it though? When you told him that though, his his dad, um, you know, he was like, as long as you know he's not abusive, blah blah blah. So he I was mean, open minded about it. He basically. was. He was. It, me and his, me and uh, my son's father. I hands on you because you, somebody else had to. I would have a problem with that. Like, okay, so why did he exactly have to put his hands on you? Exactly. Um, well, you or you should even appreciate the fact that this man cares enough about your child. Like, right. The care part. Right. Right. So you, know you have saying? to kind of be you have to be cognizant all the way around, but it does it does entail some communication, some understanding, some sure. you know finding middle ground. Because I don't believe that any child should sit up on the adult and be allowed to do whatever they want to do. Your situation, Jason, when you was like the dad was like, you don't have to listen to him. Listen to him. I'd have been packing them kids up. Right. He can Y'all come, come get this, no, come get these kids. No, and they don't have to listen to me. Come and get it's them. crazy because he because he dumb as a doorknob. And it's like, bro, I'm the one to help him with their homework. You know what I'm saying? But those and be the ones. They I don't even I don't even put my hands on my own kids. So what make you think I'm gonna touch yours? Like I don't I don't whoop my kids, I don't touch them. My voice is enough. So I, you know, I just didn't understand. And then it's like you disrespecting their mom because it's like, so you think she gonna let somebody abuse? Exactly. You know, her kid. Right. That's like you gotta, you gotta trust the mom if if you're the father in this instance. Yeah, you are absolutely right about that. Toy, what you think about it? I mean, it's it's just so many levels to it. One, communication, co-parenting well with whoever's around your kid and knowing what kind of person they would have around your kids. My situation is totally different. I have a special needs kid. I personally know you're not disciplining my kids. You educate yourself on how to deal with your kid. Like my guy, my Lord, my son's father is married. So I have to have conversations with them about what they do in their household. Cause this is all new to me, you know, just trying to communicate and get that good energy out there. So that way, if there's an issue, we can address it and move forward versus it doesn't look like it's coming from, oh, she's mad about this, she's mad about that. I'm gonna set the tone in the beginning so you understand what kind of mother I am and the expectations I have for you. Now, if I'm taking care of somebody's kid and you're in my home and I'm buying you shoes, clothes, bundles, whatever you need, if I take you to it, I don't have to hit you or scream at you, but some things are getting cut off until you can respect my authority in your life and to understand I'm not just here to be a pushover 
and I'm not going to sit back and let you be disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? There's just mm-hmm. ways to do it. There's ways to, um, there's ways to even have that respect with that kid, you know, for them to understand, okay, they're here, they're helping me, they're supportive. This person does A, B, and C for me. You know what I'm saying? I need to know how to, how to, they, I should respect them. You know, right. sometimes you get so friendly in the beginning just to try to build that relationship because you're trying to stay on mom's or dad's good side to where you let stuff roll off your sleeve. And then there's the issues when you're trying to get them to respect you, but the respect is already gone because you didn't set that tone in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's just my opinion. I don't mm-hmm. know. I just, I'm not in that situation. I've never been in that situation to have to discipline someone. I just know from my point of view, disciplining my kids, it's, it's a different way to redirect him and discipline is not on the table, but like taking away stuff and things that's important to him that I'm okay with, but someone disciplining my kids outside me, you know, none of that. I just, that's just a no for me. That is discipline though. So yeah, I was going to say, so you just against the physical discipline. Some people physically think, like his dad thinks physically disciplining him is the way to go versus taking away something like his tablet or making him earn like, um, earn his things when he does yeah. rewards and things like that. There's ways to doing that. His dad thinks discipline will get him to be straight on the straight path. But, but you, first, but you, but you, but you got to sit back and think, you got to sit back and think how, how we was raised. We was raised like, okay, you act up, you get your ass beat. I mean, that's just, that's just how we I was raised. Get, I get everything. that. No, 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 no. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's how we raised and everything. You know better. But but you, but you, you, you learn and you know better. It just depends on that child. I'm not saying he doesn't have the right to get him in order. What I'm saying no, is no. I, he's nonverbal. Right. And his way of learning things is completely different from what I learn. Like, I'm learning stuff as a mother every day. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It's a learning process. So discipline and physically... I try to refrain from that. Sometimes I'll be like, oh, you're going to get a pop for that. But at the end of the day, his mind frame works differently versus another kid. Yes. It, yeah, it, it's totally just different. a learning thing for him. That's why, I, add, I mean, even with his dad, <clears throat> he shouldn't even feel comfortable enough to want to discipline him. You know? Well, he doesn't, even, he can't though, because he doesn't even know him like that's even a pimp. Like, this is right. like, you should know that, you know, my child is, you know, different from. No, he thinks physical. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, if he does something, and, and that, and him. that's he got that old school mentality toy. Yeah, he got yeah. that old school oh. mentality. That's what I was trying to refer to. He had that old school mentality, like, oh, okay, you act up, you get a whooping. No, it's not. Especially, yeah. this, especially and this I co-parent with him because it's so bad it. with him. Yeah. I co parent yeah. with his wife. Like me and her on one accord. She's a nurse. She, you know, she deals with kids and adults and elderly. So me and her, we talk more. Like I can't even have a conversation with him because he has that old school mentality. Like Brian said, "Oh, you let white people tell you how to raise your kid. You need to do this. You need to do that." I can't. I can't do that. I and can't. that's only because of how we, as like, if we had fathers in the home, that's only because of that's the way that the fathers, a lot of fathers, the raise school fathers. raise their sons. Right. But even special needs are not like what parents need to understand is that physical discipline does not solve or teach your child anything except that if they do something wrong you're gonna hit them the thing as a parent you should be explaining to them what they're doing wrong what you expect to you know to see change and that's like with any kid and that's what a parent should understand like you think a lot of adults just think kids don't have a right to feel a certain way or think a certain way. Like just because they a kid. I work with autistic kids, nonverbal and verbal. And it's just like the stuff you do might say to a, a verbal kid or a kid that is non-autistic, that ain't gonna work with no autistic kid. Most definitely. And I've even like they understand so- differently. Yeah, Absolutely. and especially that is the proximity, you might have to use uh, area control. It's way different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, violent behavior causes more violent behavior. Yeah, you know, especially certain kids, they gonna think abuse is okay, hitting is okay, and then you gotta try to retrain, retrain mm-hmm. their mind. You for do something you put out there, and that gets hard. Mm-hmm. Right, 
because you because now you already their their mindset is hidden is okay and now yep. god forbid they get older and yep. they are out in society and they run across somebody or a police officer and they the police officer and a lot of police officers need to be trained to how to deal with special needs people mm -hmm. and everything because they can go out there and uh they they saw all this hidden and stuff and they think the hidden is okay and they hit the police officer police officer don't know that this uh child is autistic or have that they don't know about even when they do it don't matter they still don't they approach don't. they don't care yeah right. yeah and i've seen that you i want to do that personal. yeah and it, it, it yeah Definitely. And they and they don't have the training. They don't want to get the training, or they need to get training on how to deal with that. But like you said, you see that if they see that, they gonna think that that's okay, and it ain't okay. Yeah. Nay, right. nay, what you think? Oh my goodness, I got so much stuff going in my head. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I'm well. So when the conversation first began, I thought that you all were just talking about physical. Because it's, it's multiple ways to discipline a child, mentally, physically, emotionally, verbal, like it's, it's so much. And I believe in having conversations with kids. I mean, no matter how old they are, like uh, Jason said, you know, a lot of adults, I was just telling my boys that the other day, the, the issue is with parents today, they feel like they don't have to respect these kids. You have to. I mean, respect got to go both ways. You could never in your life think that, like with my sons, no matter from the 14-year-old to the 19-year-old, I could say something to one of them. They don't like it. And they just feel like, I'm saying something back. You know, oh. whether I, I say a curse word or not, like they get tired of being yelled at. They get tired of being cursed out. They get tired of being not saying my kids, you know, but they want to be treated the same way we want to be treated as adults. They have to respect us. We have to respect them. Um, I don't allow, it's not that I don't allow anybody to discipline my kids. Thank God in heaven, I don't have trouble boys. I'm so grateful for that because I don't know what I'd do if I did. But, you know, I, I, was, I raised them mostly by myself and I couldn't raise them to be the young men or the man, you know, I guess a lot of people say a woman can't raise a man, but I did my best and I'm so glad with what I did. Mm -hmm. But I still feel like, you know, like if I would have, uh, I would, I didn't talk to a couple people that made a statement like, um, oh, you got them grown ass boys. They probably disrespectful and all this. Net. First of all, you don't know my sons. And those are people that never got a chance to be around my sons or get to know my sons because you already got to set in your mind what type of boys or young men that they are, you know? So I don't trust people like that. Right. You know, you might feel like you want to come to my sons a certain way or feel like you want to say something to me. And then when my son says something back, you know, they are oh, them, them the knees disrespectful. No, these not the ones, you know? Right. So I, I, I never even up to their own dad, I just never let him discipline them. I mean, because he didn't go the right way when it came to discipline them, discipline them. Um, I felt like it was in him how he was raised and disciplined. So he was trying it with my kids. You're not going to do it. Like, I'm not, I'm, I can't let it happen, you know, because mm -hmm. it was physical abuse. And I didn't want them to grow up. They got they got the uh, mental abuse. Uh, it it went on for a long time, but that's why I come they kind of like be on the defense a little bit now, and I have to check them and bring them back to place because they now that they older they feel like they have to defend themselves, you know. Right. And they don't they they not disrespectful. Just sometimes you know how they mumble up under their breath or you know feel like okay mm -hmm. like you know I I heard you. Like, okay, don't say nothing. When I say something, it's not a question behind that is it. That's my response. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not a question behind it. That's a statement that I made, not for something to come back. So being the age that they are now, I feel like now, if I was to get in a relationship, um, nobody won't nobody move inside. I mean, they almost grown. They almost on their own. I don't have to worry about it now. But if if somebody did move inside, got to mm -hmm. be respect and boundaries there. Like, I don't want that person to feel like they can't say nothing to them. And I don't want my sons to feel like he can't say nothing to me because he's not my daddy. Mm -hmm. 
oh, well, you got it messed up. You know, like, I, I, I don't, I hate to be one of those parents because my oldest son said to me one day, mama, my friend, mama put him out because of her boyfriend. I said, why do you say that? Because he didn't do something she said and the man said something and he didn't like it. So she made him leave. He grown. He 20 years old. Baby you boy. Know. Baby boy. He, you talking about baby boy? Oh, you th- wait. So 20, 20 ain't really grown though. You ain't it's not really play. grown. It's not really you grown. Ain't to but take care of yourself for real. It, no, nope. it ain't grown at all. I have my baby would be 20. My my mine's be 15, 19, and 20 in July. Them still my babies. They the, people don't right. know who I'm talking about or referring to. Everybody my baby. But this is my thing. You want to be grown, you're gonna get your ass out of here. Period. I feel like- I, yeah, I, I, I'm not just pick, but mm-hmm. I, I also like I was talking to this man. The man was trying to get to know my oldest son. My son's just not disrespectful. They are so sweet. So he talking to him, but then on the other side, he looked at me like mama. Like he like I don't want to talk to him, and I don't want to get to know nobody else. And I'm like, why? He like I just don't. Hold and on, I'm hold like, on, hold on. Let me stop you real quick. You say you don't want to get to know nobody else. He didn't want to get to know <laughs> nobody else. I mean, I mean, I mean outside I, his daddy. Stop uh, playing. How many uncles? Uh, how many uncles do <laughs> No, he he didn't want to get to know nobody. You know, they be quiet. Which, which one but they've been around. They've been around their daddy their whole life, so they right. don't want to get to know nobody else. But I think he was scared that because he made a statement one time. He said, "I already got a dick. He not trying to be your dick." Right. right, like you, he already had it set up in his mind to protect him and his brothers. You know, nobody calm down. You know, like that's how you that's show how the my same stepkids' respect. dad was. Like you think I'm trying to take your place? Like no, nah. as the daddy, I would never try to do that. Like you know what I'm saying? Because I wouldn't want nobody try to do that to me. Right, right. Like they try to call me dad when they were younger. And I was like, no, no, no. You got a daddy, and you know what I'm saying? He's active, but. Like I said, that it, it depends on the maturity because a lot of dudes just insecure. And if they know that they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing as a daddy, any nigga gonna be a threat. Yep. So what hey Jay, what you would have said if they were to hate they would have called you pops. No, they did try, they did try to, like when uh-huh. they was younger. And I just, you know, I was just like, no, you know, don't call me that. Because okay. I I'm I know I'm active in all my kids' lives. But and, you you deserve that though. You you earn that. You earn that. But but you got a dad. Like just call me Jay. Like I don't I don't like the uh the so he, he the can step. Have a dad or he can be you know the, you're their father though. No. Uh, like, literally their father. Like you might not be the genetic marker, but like you help with homework. You making sure the house stay warm, the lights is on. Your father. That's your true. Father but what I'm saying is he's still doing his fatherly duties. Like he's he's. He was immature to me, you know. It was some stuff he could have did better, and I just would not like that. Like I would hate for for my kids to be calling another man dad. Like I'm your daddy. I don't care if your mama been with him for however many years. If I was absent in a deadbeat, then you have every right to call another man dad. But if I'm handling my responsibilities, man, That's I just right. I just couldn't do it. I wouldn't. I couldn't do that. I feel you. Right. Man. What about you, Chris Story? What you think, man? Um, discipline somebody. Okay, so listen. Like, if we're in a relationship together and I have my kids there, what I'm not going to be okay with is the way that I go about things and handle my kids with me and yours. I'm not going to allow your kids to do something that I'm not going to allow mine to do. Or I'm not going to interact with them in a way that, um, I'm not, that I wouldn't with my own kids. So if I would... If it spanking came to the situation, and this should not be first thing, if spanking came to it, if it's a situation to where I would have spanked mine, I'm going to spank yours because everybody is eating the same groceries that I just brought in this house. That's how I feel okay. about it. Now, it's not going to be. Now, if I'm gone and it's up to you and my kids, if I wouldn't spank them for that, then I don't spank you to spank them for that because that's the same way as I just said. If I'm not spanking mine like that, I'm not going to spank yours. You got one more time to say spank, because I know you ain't never got a spanking in your damn life. You know, when you come up with these kids' ass. I have not. I, have not. I am not my parents. I am not my parents. It's a last resort. My okay. daughters can probably count how many times they've got a whooping. They probably can. And remember them. 
because it's not something that it, it, it used to mess me up real bad. So I'm going I'm to feel bad about it. But they got to talk, why, spank, and hug and kisses after it was over. Because, I mean, this is what has to be better. This is not the behavior because when, when you do this, this is where this is going to lead. You know, this is a, you know, I mean, I'm having a long talk with them. Now, right. if I hurt you, um, if, I, if I say something to you out of pocket to where you felt as this, my oldest daughter right now, she's 20. She would say in a minute, we're about to be 20. She would say in a minute that, Dad, respectfully, that's how she starts off, Dad, respectfully, and then she says what she has to say. But I know what's coming after she says respectfully. She's going to try to, she's going to give me some truth. And that's okay. Like, like kids, when she got to about 12, 13, you know, younger than 10, I'm like, like, I don't want to hear too much clap back after I'm done talking to you. In the heat of the moment, don't do it because I'm going to react as if you disrespected me. <laughs> but after it's Kirk over, Franklin ass nigga, boy. <laughs> after it's over, you can come to me and say, Dad, I better you really hurt my tired. feelings when, and I'm open to it. You know what? If I hurt your feelings, I'll pop. My kids will tell you this right now, and I would. I'm. If I hurt your feelings when this happened, I'm sorry, but this is my reasoning on why I felt this way. And I would say that, and then, you know what I mean? But it's but in the heat of it, when I say go sit down, I don't want to hear why I got to go sit down. I'm not going to be receptive to the why at that moment. Right. It's going, we're going to go to a different place. Go sit down. Let me go to where, and then we can talk about it afterwards when everything is settled. As and long as you are getting, mine. as long as you are getting your children to understand whatever decision. Like I ain't never going to tell my kids. Not my 23 year old, not my eight year old. I ain't never gonna tell them no without explaining to them why I'm telling them no. Like, I'm not gonna mm -hmm. reprimand you without explaining to you my reasoning for reprimanding you. Because, like yeah. I said, if you tell them what, uh, or you know, what to what, god damn, what their choices could lead to, as opposed yeah. to. I'm gonna put my hands on you when you make a bad choice. Yes. Only thing that's gonna make them do is make sure they don't get caught yes. so they don't get hit. But if you give them an understanding of where that behavior may lead, then that in turn could actually have the effect that you wanna have. I, right. When I was younger, I talked to my kids and I have a thing about not wanting to say that if I call you, still to this day, if I call you, I didn't call you for fun. So I don't want to hear like what from another. Call them kids and they'll say, "Hey, give me a cup of ice water." Hey, so lazy might, ass up, fix me that ice water. But it's more to it than that. It's deeper off. than that. For me, it's deeper than that. If I call your name, I don't expect you to say what. What if don't say what my to daughter me. got older? Say, she's like, "Dad, why?" You say what to me? Guess what? We could not say what. Yeah, what? Man. That's not uh, even in the vocabulary. Yes, what is it? You know what I'm saying? I don't want to hear that. Yeah, that's person. That's person. It was. So my my kids would say, up, it most definitely uh, I call their name again. Yes, I call their name again. Like you said, if I call you, that mean I want you. I only say I'm not say I won't even repeat it. Ask them. My kids, I I'm not even saying come here. Christopher. My 10 year old, my 10 year old be like, coming. I'm like, <laughs> right. I'm on my yeah, way. Damn, right, seven, seven. exactly. Yeah. Right. Here I come, because I won't say it again. Uh, you heard me right. call you. That's and it. then so um, my thing was my daughter asked me, like, Dad, why do you do that? Like, when you, I said, listen, what if we out somewhere and I call your name and it's something falling? And instead of reacting to my voice and coming right away, you like, what? And then you get hit by a car because you weren't listening. Man, I, you I know, some final you. destination shit, ain't I'm you? Serious. <laughs> I really did. She it's was like, like okay, that makes sense. Sweet. I said, I want to make you feel thing. bad for not coming. <laughs> I do this right. at the grocery store. My kids oh. get away from me too far. Since they was little, I, that's it. That's all that's heard. I don't even say no words. My kid, you hear feet. Now, that sounds like I'm training my kids, but maybe I see the creepy Joe standing over there, and I don't right. want to say get away from the creepy dude that look like he's a pedophile. I just... That sound like it. That sound like a signal to stop stealing right there. Hey, here comes the kid. Hey. Hey. Hey, but it ain't nothing worse than a, a, a because I said so as parent. Well, like, when a because parents. I said so. That was, said, that oh, was my man. mama all day because I said so. What? Me and her, I said oh, so. God. I said you couldn't go. Give me the I because I'm behind it. Because I'm wrong and you ain't. 
Right. Like, like when you try to explain you, to your kid. To hear all, because I said so. I have to be a reason why I can't go. Right. Like you trying, trying to explain to, to your kid. Thing. You trying to explain to your kid with a glass of Hennessy in your hand. You trying to tell your kids, <laughs> hey, you better not drink. <laughs> Mama, why you drinking? Because I'm grown. Like, oh, so that's not a good decision. That's not a yeah. right. You just oh, want oh. me to wait. My oh. now that's my oldest son. He be like, Mama, why come you can do that? But and I'm like, look, let me tell you something. I'm grown. I, it's not, it's, no, I tell what's I tell him I'm grown, tell but I'm I'm grown. Tell him, sometimes I teach you things that ain't right, and I don't want you doing them. So I'ma stop, but I just do it behind his back. <laughs> Your ass still drinking. You drunk now. Hey, uh well, I, I talk to my kids all about decisions. Everything mm-hmm. they do about a decision. If you, listen, I don't want you to go to the party and do drugs. If you do, this is what it can lead. I swear, I'm I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling yeah. my kids this that's, that's, this leads yeah. to this, and this can happen if you do this. If you do decide to drink you out somewhere, call me. I'd rather deal with me. I'm the same you. way with them. That's how I am, yeah. my boy. I'm not gonna scold you in the car. Don't we can you talk about it later? Yeah, about the decision you just made. My my middle son, he had the nerve to try to go smoke some weed Ooh. and had a reaction, y'all. First of all, he he went he went with his friend <laughs> who he had fell out right. with. Listen, this story was man, my my old mother. He went with a friend that he had fell out with, but they had started back talking. I'm not that friend. I don't believe in us falling out and get back together. I don't do that. I've never had. Yeah, that's, that's so I I try to, mm-hmm. but I try to keep my kids, especially being boys, pay attention to every little thing. Because if that was your enemy before, no, I don't know what could have happened. But you watch out for that person. Just so happened, he went with him. And as something, I check on my boys all day. If they don't check him, me, I check, I check in on them. And he, I text him, he didn't answer. I said, let me call him. I said, my baby answered. I was like, mama, mama. And I was like, oh my God, like what, what is wrong? And he was like, mama, I can't do this. I can't breathe. So I'm thinking, these motherfuckers did something to my baby. I'm about to go kill one of their ass. And I was like, what's going on? So he's telling his girlfriend, like, talk to my mama, tell my mama what happened. So I'm like, what did they do to him? And and it's funny now, but boy, I'm going to whoop his ass. I said, what happened? She, she said, I don't know. They was at my front door. I said, what did they give you? What did you do? What happened? He said, they smoked some weed. I said, I, had, I said, some weed. What the hell? What? That was that hey, new weed. See, see so bad. Sm- my bad. Go ahead, Nene. My fault. Look, I had to call the little boy. I said, "What did you do to my son?" I was so I was gonna go. You ready boy. to fight the little boy? He, look, the little boy was like this. Yes, ma'am. He was like, "I said, how many goddamn did y'all smoke?" He said, two, ma'am." I said. Yo, bro, yo, yo, like we had to, we had to strip this boy, give him a shower. My baby was freaking out. So I was that like, nigga, I'm gonna take him to the mercy room. That nigga graduated though. He smoked them too. <laughs> 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 hey, hey, that was so funny. What'd you say? Here like me. Yeah. See, me, I smoke. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I never smoked in front of my kids, but they knew, they know that I smoke, especially my oldest daughter. So I knew that she would smoke eventually. I know kids sneaking. Like, I didn't start smoking until I was like 26. I would always turn it down as a kid. Because when we was kids, they made it seem like marijuana was so bad. You know what I'm saying? But you know, when I became a parent and seeing my daughter get older, all I did was just try to educate her on it. Like, don't you smoke nothing you ain't see rolled up. Don't, yep. you know what I'm saying? You just gotta be careful. Cause you can't, like you said, you can't, you can't trust everybody. No, yeah, you can. but like I told him next time, but the little guy was like, we tried to get some water because he can breathe. I said, so instead of you calling me, my son was breaking down like this, couldn't breathe. You dropped him off. That's why I was pissed off that he was going to get his ass with that. I it's said, what if my son would have died? <laughs> no, yeah. because what if my baby would have died? I feel you. You know, but- and I told him, I said, I'm only calling you because I'm a parent and you have turned. They play football, they go to college, and then y'all done when they did some stupid shit like this. And it's my baby that's the victim. The, the only one, it was, it was his first time trying. I think it was more, I'm sorry. I think it was more so they probably didn't want to tell on him. And if I drop him off, if you tell your mama what happened, that's on you. But 
out of respect for him, they probably just didn't want to tell him. You know what I'm saying? Exactly what happened. Yeah. <laughs> but I also <laughs> told them, I, I probably fussed at them, but I also told them, be open to me. Even his friends, like, don't, I don't want to see nothing happen to none of y'all. You know, I'm right. not that, per- what the hell I'm going to do? I mean, right. hell. But my wife you- just found out my daughter smoked weed. Like, yeah. Has smoked, has smoked weed. And she was tripping out like she's 20. Oh, yeah. Man. I knew already. Like, I almost definitely went. It's not up to me to tell your mama. (laughs) I knew already. That's crazy, though, man. But just swinging back to the uh, blended marriage and the relationships and everything, I think the main thing is trust, man. That's one of the main components is trust. Because because if we're in this relationship or we just got out of this relationship, me and my wife, we'll be married 20 years June 2nd. So... So, 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 so if we, uh, we get out of this, if we just say we went our separate ways, I got somebody, she got somebody, we have to get, we have, a trust has to be earned. I had to be, I had to trust the gentleman she'll be with and she had to trust the lady that I'm with because, well, we got older kids, but like, uh, like, uh, Toya, I have a special needs daughter. So uh, mm-hmm. I definitely have to be able to trust the gentleman that's, uh, that my wife will bring around my daughter and everything. Because it ain't not, I mean, I'm telling you, if some foul would happen, I'm telling you, I will kill him so quick. I mean, hey, I, hey, God bless him, Ted address him. I'm telling you, <laughs> Ted wants to address him, baby. Austin Lane. Okay. But I'm telling you, that's what will happen and everything because yeah. – uh, those are your prized possessions, your kids and everything. But I think if trust yeah. is established and, and and we're all adults, we should be able to sit down and say, hey, let's talk. If I if we all sit down and we meeting and stuff and he come in like on some rah rah young uh young thug, young, young people, I'm like, oh, okay. Uh that, that probably won't work out. That probably won't work out. Discipline and everything. No. But like a lot of people say, if you're living under my house and under my rules, I'm going to love you just like I love my own children and everything. And what goes for one goes for all and everything. And it's just levels to it. And discipline is not only just, I mean, we got to get it out the mindset of discipline is whooping somebody. You can talk to somebody in discipline. You could be like, hey, you can't go here this day, man. You got to stay in the house and everything, man. Your mama talked about it and everything. But when once trust is established with that child, then it won't feel like it's, it's like you really trying to come in and take somebody's place and everything because this child trusts you and they know you're coming from a place of love, mm-hmm. man. And that's the main thing. You got to come from a place of love and everything. And then I think the discipline will be so much easier and blended relationships will work out more because I, <clears throat> I, I know for facts, you got some people that say, hey, you don't, you ain't finna touch my child and everything, but your child around here cursing me out, disrespecting me, uh, he's swinging on me and stuff. Hey, you know what? Till you get this situation taken care of, I'm just going to remove myself from the situation. Because I, I I don't want to I don't want to hurt your child because if he swing on me one more time, I got him. <laughs> just like that, Jay. Right on the head, just like that. But uh, that's my take on it, man. It can work out. It can work out if every if all parties mature about it, and everybody has an open line of communication and trust is established. Blended relationships can work out and discipline kids. Uh, now, all of our kids are older and everything, uh, with the exception of uh, my my child and uh, Toya's child and everything. A couple of Chris, couple of Chris, damn, a couple of Chris kids. Dude, Chris, couple. But like I said, uh, a lot of that stuff has to be, it has to be earned. Trust has to be earned. And once everything is earned and established and uh, a ground, a foundation is set, hey, I wouldn't have no problem. If I can trust this man with my children around him, if this woman can trust, if my wife can trust my ex, I mean, if she can, my ex can trust my new lady around me, that's cool. I mean, but you got to be mature about it and everything. You can't just come in on some, <clears throat> on some straight rah-rah, like, hey, I, I run this house. I'm the man of the house now and everything. It ain't going to work out. I'm telling you, it, it will not work mm-hmm. out. As a, yeah. a guys, as parents, like I know Jason has a catch line when he does his uh, uh, comedy where he says, I'm petty. Have y'all had a real petty punishment for your kids? Like, that's alternative. Now, like me, 
I asked my kids to wash the dishes and stuff before they went to bed, like one time. I, one time I did this, and the, I come out from the bed, and I went to bed. I said what I had to say, I went to bed. I wake up, living room messy, dishes not done. I went and took all the power cords and the Xbox controllers and put them in my work bag and went to work. And left. Oh, I know they was fired. <laughs> Come on, little boy. I know they was mad. Are I know they did like, right hey, there. Dad, um, no, they came down to his job and whooped his ass. That's what they, they did. Um, <laughs> hey, Dad. So, um, they, they how, how's work going? It's, it's going fine. Um, yeah, that's good. That's good. Um. What are we gonna have for dinner? Oh, I'm just thinking about cooking, you know, whatever. And he was like, Oh, oh all right, all right. Did you um happen to take the controllers with you to work? <laughs> yes, yeah. I did. I said, Yes, I did. She's like, Oh, well, um, well, when you get home, you're gonna see we clean the house, and um, I had Aisha clean the bathroom, and <laughs> like, it was, oh, yeah, I was like, Oh, thank you, that's so nice of y'all. Appreciate that. I appreciate you did all. Uh, you did all that because they left two spoons and a bowl. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> My mom used to do that. She was like, hey, man, I was like exactly. Yeah. She would wake us up at three in the morning. She didn't care what time it was. Get I did up. my sons like that one. And that was like a couple months ago. They was pissed off. I was getting ready to go to work. I woke up. I said, oh. And, and, and y'all wonder why I, they failed that math test at uh, first time. Man, <laughs> look, I don't give a damn. Look, it's, I'm a woman. Neighbors, we've been here almost five years. My neighbors see me. I'm a woman. They know I got three three boys living in this house. <laughs> why the hell do I got to take the trash to the curb? Because y'all got to take the night before. Now, is, Guess is, what? Is, is your neighbors male or females? I don't care what no. they is. I don't like it. I, it, I'm not doing is, it. Is your neighbors males and females? Couples around her. I'm the only one that's single. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought they was looking at you and taking that damn. No, to the no, I'm, no. It's just me. It's them. I mean, people it, watch that too, but it's still it's me. I'm not doing that. Like, no. I just was, like, I, was, I was just saying that I thought you was taking the uh, trash down to the curb and your great jogging <laughs> pants and stuff. You know what? You so stupid. I don't wear a bra. No, I'm wearing a bra. You I'm wearing a bra. And I don't do nothing else. With a tank top and a white, uh, them tank top and them uh, gray sweatpants on. So. <laughs> hey, Miss Parker. <laughs> hey, boys. <laughs> oh Woo. my God, man, that was hey, man, that was a great topic, man. That was a great topic for yeah, discussion and. uh for our listeners and everything, if you want to just chime in, put a comment in, man, show your thoughts and everything about disciplined kids and blended marriages and relationship. We definitely want to hear what you got to say about it, man. So uh, with that being said, we're going to swing it over to our episodes and our top segments. We're going to swing it off first. We're going to start it off today with uh, Dre Day with orgasms. Give us an orgasm, Dre Day. Wake so, uh, I'm, uh, I'm awake. I'm awake. But um, something interesting happened, and uh, I was given two suggestions for orgasm today. And I went, and I know both of the songs. I'm acquainted with both of the songs, and I went and listened to them again, and I could not connect with these songs. So I'm passing this segment off to the person who requested these two songs. <laughs> what I want you to do is tell me how these songs give you an orgasm. Big Smooth, take it away. Oh, man, hell <laughs> no. She just swung this over. <laughs> I, what, 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 I sent her two songs today. I sent her, uh, I sent her Kiss, uh, Rock and Roll All Night. I love that song. I want to rock and roll all night and party every day. Oh, wow. That's one of them songs. Hey, that's the only them. one you sent. I'm sitting here looking at. What was the other one I sent, Chris? Hey, the Roy. other one. Leonard Skinner. I was. Sweet I was slow. Oh yeah. I, said, I know this Negro did not send me "Sweet Home Alabama." They sing Alabama. that in front of a Confederate flag, bro. <laughs> hey man. <laughs> hey man. I think this dude that lost hey. his mind. Hey, he could have sent me home. flag as a backdrop hey. when they performed. He could have sent me Hotel California by the Eagles, but no. I he sent, sent Leonard me Skinner, Sweet Leonard home, Skinner. Alabama. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you ain't <laughs> never been, hey, you ain't never been down to one. Hey, I sent it because it's Alabama. 
I like the tide and everything. I Sir, go, I'm from down Texarkana, couple... not Alabama. Alabama was full of strange fruit, too. Oh, man. Man, what's wrong with that, man? Y'all got to open up what? your ears, man. Hey, hey, I guess because I went to college, I played college, and I was probably I was one of the only brothers on the baseball team and everything, and I was exposed oh, to the music like that at 19, 18, You I mean, was 17. dancing to pour some sugar on me, wasn't you? What'd you say? Hey. Slow down, because I was like, hey, don't do my damn. That ain't no I went to, No, 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 no. Hey, Chris, you know, I, tell I, them. I went, Chris, tell them we came up on KZ93. That's all they played was white rock and roll. That was I it. I was so excited for Friday song. night. Hey, man. hey, 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 y'all like, hey, y'all like, hey, that's a pretty good song, man. The Eargasm, hey, it made me rock out, man. Hey, sometimes I got a pickup truck. Sometimes I let the windows down in the pickup truck, throw the dog in the bed Where's of the, the pickup truck. Man, turn your camera around. Let me make sure you ain't being, you ain't Wait hailing a second. that car Blink twice, blink twice. <laughs> If it's right. I am not right. in the, hey, hey, I'm not, really hey, I'm not in the sucking place, man. Those are just songs that I really hey I enjoyed, man. Hey, I no. thought Dre, I thought Dre they could feel it and everything. Listen, listen, the kiss song was okay. I can deal with that because I can see how if I was listening to that every day, how I could get hyped up off of it. Like on my way to work or something like it. that. With some I can cocaine. see how that would Okay. Okay. Rock bands go. Metallica's dope, and so is um Ozzy Osbourne. Some Ozzy Osbourne. That's Kiss. Ozzy Osbourne. No, Ozzy Osbourne was Black Sabbath. Sir, that's most definitely not. That's Gene Simmons. That's Gene Simmons. This is like the grocery store good value version of that. That was that. That's that good value Ozzy Osbourne. Hey, that, that's what that is. That His was, wife doing the most right now. Rage Against the Machine is my man, favorite. Ain't What's she, wrong with her? What is she doing? Ain't she, explain to me what <laughs> racism. No, white people need to explain to other white people about racism. Exactly. Black yeah, folks didn't create right uh, racism. White people did. So get your education from them, not from us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Sharon better those... get her uh, crumpet. <laughs> Crumpy eating ass on somewhere. <laughs> right, get up out of there. But those two songs right there just made me. Uh, I like those songs, man. I'm, I listen to all type of music. I mean, and I hey, do too. I listen I to love gutter trap. I listen to it all, man. But just those songs, just hey, remind me some couple of places I was in at certain times and everything. Like, like when I listen to Sweet Home Alabama, hey. I I didn't been to a couple tag games. I mean, not too people, not too many people been down to Brian Denny Stadium down in Tuscaloosa. Oops. So I mean, I mean, hey, it is what it is, man. When you when you go to the Bama game, they playing that game when everybody in the stadium and everything rocking out. So I mean, hey, I like Leonard Skinner. I ain't gonna change. I like name, uh, name another song by Leonard. I know Skinner. what's funny though. You know, like the white people I'm equivalent to bad ass on stuff is right some sugar on me, though, right? <laughs> oh, like if you're going to the club and the, the, when they say that, don't do, 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 the pandemonium that happened, the same shit happens when pour some sugar on me come on in the white club, and it's insane. I first seen it happen, <laughs> I was in, I was aghast. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, I smooth. Been, I could do, I could do Van Halen. I can't do. uh Little you say kiss. Yeah, can't kiss. Do kiss. Nah, man. That you still ain't gave us another Leonard Skinner song. Don't Google it either. I ain't Googling <laughs> it. The only on, thing I listen to is Sweet Home Alabama, guys. Please, let me pull up YouTube real quick and look at this. <laughs> Hands free, baby. <laughs> oh, no, hey, I ain't gonna lie to you. Sweet Home Alabama is the only song I like, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do like the part where they say, in Birmingham, we love the governor. Now, I do like that part. I don't know why. <laughs> hey, say it, do, that, do that again, Dre. Do that part again. Hey, do that part again. <laughs> <laughs> that was Birmingham. Her part. <laughs> in Birmingham, we love the governor. <laughs> I do governor. like that part. I don't know. Governor, G U B. Oh, my God. And, I, and I'm like, oh, man, that's just crazy, man. We know a nigga named Governor, don't we, Chris? <laughs> yeah, I do, actually. I do know a dude named Governor. I know a dude named Governor. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, for real, in real life, governor. his name is Governor. Governor. Yeah, I do know somebody named Governor. 
I was I glad he was smart because if you a dumb nigga named Governor, like you gotta <laughs> change. Oh, yeah. Governor Damn. was smart though. <laughs> was you gotta, right, Governor. You gotta change your name to Alderman if your name is <laughs> you dumb and named Governor. His sister is down in Texas. Oh, Kristen. Yeah, she moved down to Texas. She's a principal yeah. down there, I think. That's a guess. Who was playing that? And you playing it like a that's <laughs> He is a whole man. I hear that song playing. I'm gonna start getting scared. I'm gonna, I'm gonna feel like 6:30 is coming around and start reading her. Did start heading home. Just hear this man over here. I heard, he, uh, sir. <laughs> Don't ye. I off. tried to. I, I tried to delete it as soon as I heard it. Like. Hey man, I like this. Uh, hey, sweet home Alabama. Nah, but that's cool. Everybody, know. everybody, every, but, Everybody's yeah. entitled to the, their music because, uh, just is. to be honest, y'all might one of these days y'all might get Black Hole Sun out of me. By, That's uh, the cut. Black Hole it? Sun, isn't it? In the rain coming down, Black Hole. That's the song. I'm That's not familiar. Cut. I'm not familiar. It's by Soundgarden. Look it up. Look it up. Soundgarden. Black Hole Sun. <laughs> You done made his name. It's just very <laughs> melodic. That's hey, a, every song you done played on Eargasm with Chris Story was feeling. So, man, <laughs> I mean, it's pretty cool. She in, my, uh, she in my playlist. <laughs> Got to be. I was going to try to do something outside of my, my own p- playlist, and that's why I was really glad that Smooth sent something. And then oh, when yeah. I saw Step which songs the they box. were, I was just like, oh, I can't do it just <laughs> yeah, that, that was the problem. The I wasn't. I could not do it justice, and I went and listened to him, and I even tried. I'm telling you, I tried. I honestly tried. But Leonard Skinner, that was a non-starter for me. I was like, I was like, I even though I'm uh, yeah. I'm wildly familiar with the song, I just could not do it the justice that it needed to be done by somebody who actually loved it. So. All the black people start packing their stuff up. Well, must be getting dark. Time to be gone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know good and hell well. You be in the club, and as soon as that rock and roll start playing, you know it's y'all curfew. It's time, yep, it's time to go. Curfew. It, well, here in our in our city, they play it on purpose at a certain time. They play hip hop music up to about one o'clock. But after Dang. one o'clock, they playing the wackest music. They and it's then time they, for then they to leave. It's time for you to go. Look. Then they start uh, mixing the hip hop with some techno Rocket. shit. Like, oh, right. That's definitely when I'm Rocket. down. Roll all night. <laughs> and he grew to it. I'm gonna rock and roll all night. Look at him. Look at him, y'all. All right, man. This nigga <laughs> from Montana. <laughs> you say this nigga from Montana via, via the north side of St. Louis. <laughs> y'all, I'm just tell y'all something. I first, when I first met Smooth, we was both at probably one of the whitest middle schools in uh-huh. St. Louis. So I understand where he's coming from. Because I was I was heavy in the guns and roses around the time that I met him. Deep yeah. And I had I had long hair. And what wings white girls wore? Oh, <laughs> but the only problem, oh, yeah. only problem with us when we went to middle school together, uh, I uh, I was being bus to the bus to the county was, from the city. No, I wasn't. I wasn't being bus. You were still in the county. I was still in the county then. But uh, that that right there, man. Hey, y'all can laugh at me, man. Hey, everybody got the song that just take them to a place, and sometimes it's about sex, drugs, and rock and roll, y'all. I might have to listen. Nah, to like I said, great. you uh, and pour some sugar. If pour some sugar on me came on, nigga, I'm damning. <laughs> I'm damning. <laughs> let, let Ben Halen jump. Come on, nigga. I'm jumping. <laughs> what did you say? Hey, Jay, say the hell with you. Hey, hey. I'm kicking it. It's <laughs> a couple of my rock with. Oh yeah. <laughs> Man, hey, thank you, Dre Day, for swinging it over to me. You put me on the spot, but hey, that's what we do. That's what we do at the crew. We put people on the spot. Swing it over to you. I, want y'all to know, What's up, I was lost because I was like, eargasm. I was like, okay, what they finna do? And then she was like, we're gonna do some music, but I couldn't get with this shit. And I'm thinking, 
<laughs> I'm thinking she finna send you some shit back like it might have been like some uh, Fetty Wap or something. And then she said Leonard Skinner and Kiss. I'm like, oh. It's Man, and it's hard for me to say that I can't get into a song like the whole Hamilton soundtrack. I listen to that in the car. I'm about like to say, it's that's dope. Why could you not? Hey. I got that on my playlist. Okay. Please. I cannot hear another Hamilton song. My mama has, every time I go over there, Hamilton is on the TV. Oh, my God. Oh, be prepared because um, cause In the Heights is coming out later this year. That's another Lynn. I Manuel Miranda. That. I did see that. That's another play by him. That's what's up. Yeah. Hey, thank you, Dre Day, for you uh, welcome. You welcome. Orgasm and everything. You, if you do nothing else, you made us laugh tonight, man. Swinging <laughs> it over old me. Them songs made you me made laugh. us laugh. Picking it up. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> Without further ado, then he tried to force it on us. We gonna play <laughs> right. in the background. Play it. No, hey, it is good. You gonna listen to this song or else? You gonna get out the car? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, man. Hey man, we finna swing it over to uh, Let Chris and Chill by Chris Storian. Give us something good tonight, Chris Storian. Hey everybody. Um, hey everybody. So um, I was kind of confused on what I wanted to talk about because I've been watching a lot of things. Um, if I want to go movie, I was going to talk about a series and I guess I can do both. Um, it's a series I watched I'm very fond of. It's called American Gods based on the book by Neil Gaiman. And I read the book some time ago along with the uh, sequel to the book of Nazis, uh, Nazis Boys. So I have read both of the books, amazing stories. So the TV show American Gods is on Stars, which is a series, so you can binge watch it. It's, this is the final season, I believe. So if you was to start watching and catch it all up, I like the way How they many play seasons? on How many seasons does it have, Chris Story? Uh, this is the fourth one. Fourth, fourth season, final. okay, gotcha. Uh-huh. So, it's the show with uh, old boy from Drumline. I made it. He was in it. He's not in this final season. They okay. let him go, but he was a Nazi and he was epic. So if you just see his okay. part as a Nazi, he it's crazy. When he was writing the show for the different black deities and how they came, the, the premise of the show is where the deities come from outside the world. You know, everybody pretty much migrated to America from different parts other than the Native Americans. Mm-hmm. Um, so their gods came with them. So in this season, you're starting to become acquainted with the Orisha. So you have Oshun is a big part of it, and she has now transformed um, who was the Queen of Sheba. They call her Bisquis, and the Bible is the Queen of Sheba. She's now realized that she's an actual Orisha. Um, I can't remember which, which one she is, or she's a, a, a side spirit of Oshun. And so you have that happening this season. Um, I think Jesus um, was in the season where they met Easter. Mm-hmm. Easter of the I uh, just watched that episode right the Palestinian <laughs> goddess who where the name comes from because she's a goddess of spring and in birth and so for the spring solstice which coincides with the holiday of Easter and she had to come to terms with okay she's really not that hot the reason why her name is celebrated is because a homeboy right mm-hmm. there so I, I just love the way they take on that show so American Gods is binge worthy is most definitely uh, uh four ice cubes the seasons with um, Orlando Jones, five out of five. Season three, season two with Orlando Jones writing with five out of five. This new season, I give it about a four. First season, I give it about a four. Okay. Um, the you movie. You said there's somebody named Bitch Please in there. I need to watch that. Bisquees. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bisquees is the goddess to get her warship. First oh. episode of the show. To be, for her to be worshipped, she's now a modern times a prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> and so she gets, she gets men to say her name as she's having sex with them. And as they say her name, she starts to swallow them inside her glory hole. And they glory really disappear. She lays there like, oh. There you go. They just go. go. Okay. They go. That's the end of them. They, they, they're forever. They worship their, they gave their hole. sacrifice to her forever. Not first episode of the home. show, five five minutes. Five first five minutes of the show that happens. And they had you hooked ever since, huh? I had to watch it, man. I had to watch it. Anything <laughs> dealing with glory holes, huh? You you man. you own it, huh? Hey, I told you where glory holes and asshole. That's okay. where we came from. That's so, where everybody, that's where all the men trying to get back to for the rest of your life. You trying to get back in there, no matter which gate. 
an entrance you're trying to go into. You're trying to get back to heaven. Wow. That's why. One of the gates is wrong. One of the gates is the wrong gate. Some of them gates might have a little it, it, rust on it. It depends on what part of the town you in. <laughs> right. You just got to have the right code. I'm telling you. You got to have the right movie, one. The movie I liked was uh, Malcolm and Marie. I want to say the name is. I haven't Ooh, watched it. Before. I couldn't get yeah. with it. I couldn't get with it. Now, this, the acting in this movie is superb. Superb mm -hmm. acting. However, it's he emotionally heavy because this is the epitome of what a toxic relationship looks like. Mm -hmm. Like, without putting hands on each other, this is a toxic relationship. Like, the screaming, and then the, the tension comes like, okay, are y'all about to make up and have sex? And it gets right there, and then somebody has to say, well, remember that time? And then... Boom! And then it's an explosion of an argument. Then they go back, mm -hmm. they settle back down, and then they get to kissing and hugging. And it was like, well, what if? Boom! And, and it happens over and over again throughout the movie, and it ends with them like giving a hug, and you still like, no, nah, y'all, y'all need, yeah, <laughs> need to break up. Y'all need to break up. But the the road <laughs> to the movie is it really takes you there, and all the up yeah. and downs of it. And it's like I keep saying these movies that pull on you and make it a little. A little rough because I, I like I want to be a part of the movie too, and they this movie does pull you in, acting superb. I give it a um I give it a three and a half just because of the emotional heavy of it, of heaviness of it. You might even pause it and put your beer bone and um treat yourself to a snack with your lady, and then unpause the movie and go back. That might happen. Mm. That might happen, but just, it still yeah. is uh, chill worthy. <laughs> you you what? saying put your you said put your bib on and munch on fallopian. Yeah. Uh, go that, on, put your bib on. A fallopian sandwich. You got hey. your fork and knife right there. Let them, hey babe, let me go have some. Let me have a let me have a snack real quick. I'm a little hungry. Then we can go back oh, to the movie. Oh my goodness. That's why the women like Trey. That's why the women <laughs> love Chris Story. Just saying. Wow. Hey. So appreciate y'all. Ray, thank you for that. Share that Chris Story. Hey, it was one movie out uh I want to uh, just tell you about it. I don't know if you guys seen it, but I want to go see it. Someone told me about it. I saw the trailer of it. It's called Deceitful Passions. Mm -hmm. I never seen that, but that's supposed to be a pretty good movie, man, about a guy who was married and uh, had an affair with a lady, a uh, black guy, black guy. So uh, I'm on, I want to check that out. It's Deceitful Passions. So. You said it all shocking. Like, what, what, is, what is it on? Deceitful Passions. I think you can get it. It's on Tubi. You can watch it okay. on Tubi. Oh, I got Tubi. I yeah, you can Tubi. watch. You can watch it on Tubi. I'm so uh, you gotta check that out. Shout out to Quale TV too. Black on Netflix. De That's uh, what's up? Deceitful Passions. Deceitful Passions. I'm gonna check that That's out. a movie. All right, That's man. Not like it's gonna be like the one with uh Beyonce and uh Idris. I don't know. They like, making I, all the same move. Yeah. Like movie. Yeah. Yeah. I'll show yeah. you crazy. <laughs> Beyonce's <laughs> best acting <laughs> ever was in that movie. You would have. <laughs> that was. Because <laughs> she's showing hell and do it in the fight. Was. <laughs> that was the best Beyonce acting job ever. It took too long to uh, knock that white woman head off in that movie. I'm like, what black woman is this? Yeah, right. she was very understanding. Yeah, she yeah, was. Very compassionate. Mm. To understand. That movie is over two hours long. Which one? Of, of nothing. And I What's love it. No, the Seatful Passion. The Seatful oh. Passion. Oh, oh. Passion. Yeah. That's Who's long. in it? Who is in it? Uh, yeah, look, just Google the trailer. I think it's a pretty good I trailer. I looked it up on V. Uh, what's that? Tubi. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's really got a Snyder Cut Justice name. League this weekend. Yeah, four Brian, hours. Christine, Clark, Crystal. I don't know these people. I mean, you yeah, got to give them a chance. You know, you, 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 we just got to see. Well, you got to see, and then just let us know, Auntie. Okay. <laughs> Hey, I'm a, I, hey, I'm gonna tell you, it was a movie. Uh, I need to be at that next show. I'm telling you, I watched, I watched the Plastic Cup Boys. Uh, I'll be listening to them sometimes. And uh, uh, one of the comedians on there, Spank Horton, he was in a uh, movie called Sucker for Love. And, Your mind. and every time they talk, it's they exactly. drive Spank about that movie. And I saw the movie on Tubi, man. It was, hey, it wasn't that bad, man. It wasn't that bad. The movies on Tubi are like. D movies. 
D, yeah, D. C so, minus at best. They are. Am I you gonna know, see, that's why I'm like, two hours. If I go long. get Tubi, am I going to see Fat Beach on Tubi? Uh, you, probably, you probably you probably see fatter beach fat on Tubi. Beach. It's like, <laughs> yeah. You ain't gonna see fat movie. beach. You probably see fatter beach on Tubi. And it was re- and it fatter was recorded beach. and sold. Then. Am I gonna see? Hey, hey, I got the hook up on Tubi. The sequel. Jay, what you say? Recorded and sold in parking lot. <laughs> they recorded and sold it. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Man, thanks, Chris Story, for sharing that with us, man. We're going to mm-hmm. go finish off our segment tonight with our girl. She just inhaled that water real quick. Miss Toya, oh. hey, t- hey, take us out of here with what the hell. Tell us about what the hell. What's your Let me tell about? you. So today, I had a what the hell moment in the store. It's basically what the hell people do with their own money is why is that an issue for people right now. So mm-hmm. I was at... I was at Family Dollar by my job picking up some stuff for work. And there was a lady in there and she spent every bit of six hundred dollars in Family Dollar. Man, what the hell she got? She got people in there checking. mad as hell. What'd she get for six hundred dollars? Listen, so the lady, from my understanding, she she took an Uber there. She took an Uber there. Oh hell no. And that's that's strike two. Hold on. So she spent six hundred dollars, but everything in her cart was a necessity. Mm-hmm. For for you could tell it was for kids. There was stuff that uh, toothbrush. It wasn't like junk food or nothing. It was like towels and you know yeah. stuff that you need for a household. She might have so just. There was a girl. There was a girl in the back of me complaining because the lady was ringing up so much. They was ringing up so much stuff for the lady. It remind you. I can hear this girl's conversation saying how some man is flipping her taxes. She's complaining. <laughs> Listen, she's complaining about the woman who's buying stuff for kids and herself. My what the hell is I'm looking at her like, what the hell is it? If a person don't ask you for a ride, gas money, a house to stay in, if they're not asking you for anything, whatever they do with their money, it's up to them. Like I even been seeing it on social media. People want to invest. People want to do this. People want to do that with their taxes, and then they'll be broke next week. What, what does it matter what someone do with their money? Yeah. Remind you, the woman judging this woman who's probably buying stuff. I mean, come on, think about it. We were just in a pandemic. People lost their jobs. People couldn't afford to buy their kids probably something for Christmas, a holiday. Just doing stuff for their kids that they should do with this money, not letting a man flip their taxes that'll probably be gone, but not gone when he get home. You see what I'm saying? Like, I just been seeing so much judgy stuff about what people do but with their money that, right but now. you know why they do that? Because they feel like they downgrade family dollar, dollar general, because you got yeah. to you. I mean, it's the same thing if she went to Walmart. This is just a smaller uh, building. Because exactly. these dollar stores, they make the same amount, if not as uh Walmart and see that's that shit don't be and that shit do not be cheaper. It is cheaper. No. So, so when people sit there and then they because I was in the store the other day when I was at work and this lady shit I had to look back. I ain't gonna lie. I said damn because she was in the store for a minute her and her guy yeah. and when, when she got done her total was like 260 something I said but I mean I wasn't was judging her I just like god damn yeah. <laughs> because, was your family dollar she Dollar General, you know, I'm at Dollar oh, General. They had so, to, <laughs> but everything she had, they needed. It was sheep. It was, but yes. I mean, the stuff you you can get a a pack of twin size uh bed sheets, those twenty dollars plus tax. You know, so nine ninety nine if you go to Ross for less. Look at him. <laughs> but no, like a lot of people, that is true. Like, cause I keep seeing the stuff on Facebook, like. You know, they got them spinnies and, you know, all the little side yeah. jokes. But don't judge nobody. This could, some people, I used to be that mother to where I couldn't, I couldn't get the things that we need, the necessities, the big things until I got my income tax. You know, yeah. I, I used to be that mother. So it, it ain't always good to judge people. Like sometimes I sit, I look, I, you will never know what's going on in my head. But I uh, like, the observation is everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Dang, man. 
That's crazy. Well, my look up little dollars in my account, it ain't been touched. You're, you got your stimulus. I, mean, I, I sure know. did. Do anybody know anybody? <laughs> no, nah, I'm Mr. Comedian. Ain't got it. He's going to flip it for you. Anybody uh, ever know a dude you. that flipped some a woman taxes and to be successful? Has any has that ever Hell happened? No. In Did the history be... of niggerdom, has this ever happened? Yeah. That nobody ever <laughs> you know I'm that sure bastard ain't flipping before. like that. Ever has it happened? I've never seen it be Victorian, successful. In the history of what? The niggerdom and coonism I've never seen. Say niggerdom. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen a uh, flipping taxes situation happen nah, but, to be successful. But they do. Oh, but he could have possibly flipped them. He just told her he didn't have it. Exactly. That's always how it ends, babe. Look, we uh, took he, a loss. We I took a loss. That. He, he flipped her taxes, all right. He did a cartwheel when he got them. That's right. <laughs> right. He flipped them from her hand to his hand. That's it. <laughs> he did three hey. cartwheels when yeah. he got that money. Hey, this nigga up, did a whole round off. <laughs> Flip no. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, hey, man. hey, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Nay, nay, you ain't answered Jason's question. Can we hold some? Me and Jason uh, asked you a serious question. Can we hold some? Toya, what happened was. <laughs> Damn, you let me hold some. I definitely run for the stuff. What you mean? When's your payday? I need to know when your payday. We got to sign something. Sure. Damn, this gonna be a payday loan. And make sure you have the <laughs> yeah, yeah. right. five hundred percent interest. And I need to know what you get paid. Five hundred percent interest. Five hundred percent interest. Exactly. So like a funky twenty dollars. Oh, you want to get my money back? Hey man, you know what? That is so damn true though. When you when you when somebody borrow money, man, God, man, let me hold that. But then. You wait. You, they, I'm, I'm, gonna pay, I'm gonna pay you back Friday. Then you Friday get here. You don't even trip off of it. It's a whole month and that two months went by. Hey man, right. you got that forty dollars. Man, I'm gonna give you that funky ass forty dollars. They, 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 they be so disrespectful to the money. Yeah. Here go your little punk ass twenty dollars. Hey, 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 well, people don't be honest. You be looking for your little change. Oh, like my man. my sisters have done that on a number of times. Like, girl, did I really loan you some money? I'm like, man, y'all be tripping because I be looking for my little coins. I hey, hate man, J- Jason money. said the like best. Yeah. J- hey, they yeah. do say, man, that little punk ass twenty dollars. That little punk yeah, ass twenty dollars. Why you somebody back the for twenty? The forty didn't do nothing to you. The forty ain't do nothing to you. It don't matter. Them be them be the people. Now you the forty to took care of you when you needed it. Right. You got the fuck ass forty. It's just forty dollars. <laughs> Damn. Look, look, now you disrespecting the forty. Look, today I was at work. I don't want to say some bad some other thing. They be nosy. He mm-hmm. said he called me. He said, "Mama," I said, "Yes," and he was like. Um, what time you get off? And I was like, uh, at seven. And I was like, I had school going. He was like, good. I was like, okay. And I knew he was finna say something. He said, mama. I said, what? He said, do kids get stimulus checks? <laughs> I said, do kids get stimulus checks? I said, no, y'all don't get stimulus checks. I said, stop listening to you damn fuck. Like y'all trying to get my son cussed out, trying to ask me for this hey, he, he he trying to slide up on you like, hey mom, you got fourteen hundred up off me. Hey, hey, he, he said you got fourteen hundred up off me. Hey, let me get at least around five. If you got that, that's mine. He <laughs> tried it. I said he tried to straight come for me. Well, I don't really come for me. He gonna try to say it all. Hey. And I said, I said, nah, y'all don't get no money. I said, stop listening to your friends. He's like, oh, okay. Yeah, you don't go tell. Yeah, he said he, hey, he, said he get at least no five hundred of that, man. He, he, he didn't, man. He, he only, <laughs> hey, he only want the seven. He just said, give him like about three or four. But you want, <laughs> but you want him. To, you want me to take out the trash, but I can't get my. Love, take them damn trash cans down. This one fourteen year old, they got everything but four wheels. Okay, he ain't get nothing. <laughs> he ain't get nothing. He ain't get none mm. unless he needed. He got a little green light card. When he needed loaded, I transfer the money on there. He'd be good to go. Mm-hmm. He'd be all right. He get about a hundred dollars a month. Put on his little PlayStation. He'd be happy. He'd be. Happy. But see, he got the little kids in his ear. Man, I tell him he that your mama said, "Huh?" I said he heard about the big bucks. He want he want to get in on that deal. Yes, he hey, did. The little yes, kids. Hey, they came to school. Man, my mama got. 
My mama got $3,600 for me and my brother and stuff. What's and up? And, my mama and got they took us to Burlington with that 3600 <laughs> but look, my niece said she said I didn't know. Y'all got burgers know. in St. Louis? Yeah, huh. we do. Damn, you disrespectful, Chris. I didn't they, know. They got what? He hella disrespectful. Hey. Right? Y'all got Burlington hey. in St. Louis. Everybody got Burlington. Everybody got Burlington, got Burlington down still here. Open in my town, people steal from it till it closed down. Oh, it it, it good. stay open for a long time. And they it said it back good. up. <laughs> You see, I ain't trying to come for us to you. He said, I just asked. Don't come here. I'm telling you right now, we're going to attack your look, look, bright ass. They definitely going to be trolling on Chris. Y'all keep calling me bright like I ain't all this level of chocolate. Let me see. <laughs> hey, Chris. Chris Oops. Chris. Wait. Hey, Chris Bays, man. Chris ain't no chocolate. Chris Bays. <laughs> no, Chris ain't chocolate. Chris ain't. Chris ain't oh, never tripping. had a chocolate day in his life. Yeah, right. <laughs> that nigga hell I be getting brown in June. I be I getting brown khaki, in June. Huh? I say yeah, yeah. Chris, in June. Khaki is a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my hell God. No. Oh, my goodness. Miss Toya, we thank you for our What the Hell episode, <laughs> baby. We really Yeah, that was a good you. one, Toya. That yeah. was a good one. I love it right now. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, man, it's been an amazing show today, man. I want to thank our special guest, comedian Jason Jenkins. Hey, he came and graced us with his presence. He made the show pop even further. Jay, thank you, brother, for joining us, man. Hey, hey, if you just listen to the show, please subscribe, like the show, share it, drop a comment. Hey, if you like it, drop a comment. If you don't like it, drop a comment. Me and Chris Story say we want that smoke. So if you want to give us that smoke, hey, we we ready. We get we got Leave some fire extinguishers. What you say, Chris? Leave a comment and tell me I ain't shit. I'm telling you, hey, give it you to us. Talking about 314. That's okay, Tori. We gonna have all the three one four girls go up under Chris Dorian and say some bad stuff. They gonna get him. They gonna, they, they oh gonna my ask God. him to come on their comedy. They gonna want him there. Oh, they just going to boo you, man. Hey. We finna mm -hmm. go sign out, guys. Hey, this is the crew. Man, we want to just thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Hey, like, share, subscribe. And we will be coming back at you with another episode. We out of here. Peace out. Bye. Love y'all. I don't mean to be so